next up, um, I would actually, uh, since I forgot to introduce myself in the very beginning, uh, I will now do that very shortly. Uh, so I'm Lisa Kamlader. I work for DESI, Deutsches Elektronen-Synchrotron, uh, in Hamburg. And this is actually a very good link to, <laughs> to the next person uh, who will present um, his, uh, his talk because um, I work together with him. It's Thomas Berg Berghöfer and we coordinate the Genera network. So now you know everything you need to know. Um, so Thomas, please, you're already on the floor, very good. Um, I will uh, leave it to you to present a little bit more yourself. And um, yeah, enjoy everyone. Present a little bit of myself. Yeah, I, I was a physicist some many years ago and uh, I entered into the field of uh, funding agency business and then uh, later we got the move into uh, gender equality projects on the European uh, level. So, so my, my uh, skills are more in this networking business, so bringing people together, so like today, <laughs> together with Thomas Without Age. Uh, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, Genera. <laughs> Genera Network uh, in the clans. You, you see here we are 42 members and friends coming from all the green-colored countries. So we are covering three time zones from Israel to Portugal and a bit uh, further into Latin America, uh, a network uh, that got attached to us. So we got founded uh, at the end of August 2018 and uh, the plan was made within a, a European-funded project that was uh, developing gender equality plans in physics research organizations. It was clear within the three years we will not solve of all problems, so we have to stay together and uh, yeah, look and watch and uh, create new activities. Uh, and yeah, so within the, the Genera project, we drafted an MOU that all the members uh, sign when they come closer and want to be attached to our network. So it is uh, actually a network of physics research institutions uh, if they look like physics research institutions. We don't take it so strict than STEM other or, uh, institutions from other STEM fields are also welcome. So we consist of members and friends. Friends is a nice name and a nice word for observers. I'm so grateful to, to Luis who invented this. It's, it's perfect. So we have a vision that is uh, written here, you see, and uh, it, it is an interdisciplinary get-together of uh, physicists, social scientists, lawyers, uh, and who knows who will come next, right? If you want to read all the details about the network, then here's the website uh, that you can look at. You will find there also all information that we compiled on gender equality plans. So, um, I say next slide or? Yeah. Ah, push the button, yeah. So, imagine. <laughs> Imagine you want to go to the moon. What do you need? It is a three-stage rocket. This is what physicists learn in the first semester when they go to university and study physics. So it somehow explains what we are doing. When you make the move from physics into gender in physics or gender at all, you will see that uh, you have a three-stage process defined by Londa Schiebinger. <laughs> So this may be explaining the name of this rocket. <laughs> so fixing the numbers, that means for us we are taking data every year, we are creating career development tools together. Then when it comes on the level of institutions, we are, we are playing this GEP business. So we have all the tools that we are updating, that we are offering to, to everybody who uh, wants to uh, ha have a gender equality plan. So these are the general legacy tools, I would say. So everything that uh, we developed in the project and that we are continuously updating and uh, providing to the communities. So the third level is then fixing the subject. Of course, we are also have in our menu card the gender dimension in physics, research and teaching. So that's why we are here at this conference. So no more fun about uh, songs from yesterday night. Uh, 
So we are organized as a community of practice with a well-structured activity. So we meet every month for a one-hour online meeting to discuss, to present news, to listen to everybody. So what uh, we should do next, or we, we call up uh, topics and have uh, presentations on this. We have... Uh, annual working meetings in general, uh, assembly meetings where we call up interesting uh, topics uh, to, uh, to discuss in person. Then uh, on the meeting in 2019, we, we said, okay, uh, this is not enough. We, we have uh, so many topics, we cannot address them all together all the time. So let's split up in working groups and see who is interested in what and, and uh, yeah, work on things. You see these five uh, topics listed here and the last one is the one that uh, I would like to go in more details. It's the one on gender dimensions. This working group, uh, uh, or let's say gender dimensions, we mean it uh, similar to gender perspective or gendered innovation. So it's all covering this in this working group and it's chaired by Thomas without age. <laughs> it's a long-standing joke, uh, Thomas with and without age. I'm with. So, uh, physics is a gendered subject. This is where we start. And then, yeah, it, when you look in, for example, at the Gendered Innovations website, you may identify, see a few, a very few examples on uh, physics content. Yeah, they, they exist. But when you look into basic physics research, then yeah, the examples are still missing and we have to work on this. This is the blind spot in this gender dimension uh, field. And we are convinced that they must exist, but this is the work of this working group to really uh, dig them out and uh, yeah, make them clear to everybody. So, the goals and the outcomes of, of this working group. So, of course, the long-term uh, goal is that we change physics in our institutions and beyond. Uh, that we are more inclusive and therefore more relevant and more excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have, of course, this is a long-term goal. It, it will take a, a, a long breath to get there. So, that's to keep... Uh, keep momentum, we have defined the midterm goals. So, we, we said we produce the following outcomes. The Gadimir conference in Lund with invited uh, experts. Of course, we are here. So, this thing is already, yeah, it had the green <laughs> thing. So, it is, it became reality. So, this is uh, outcome of this working group. Then, we are collecting all kinds of uh, uh, references, papers that somehow smell like they bring us forward. And <laughs> so we started with the repository of all these uh, documents and uh, we started with the journal club that uh, individual participants in this working group uh, read the paper more carefully and present it to all of us that we learn from this. So this is... Uh, great uh, uh, working together and it works uh, fantastic. So then um, the goal is that we prepare, prepare a workshop on gender dimension in, in STEM fields, physics. So part of it is, it is already made. So we have a resistance uh, workshop uh, already um, prepared and we had the piloting uh, two days ago. So the guinea pigs were we self. So, <laughs> and the, I think the piloting worked quite well. Is it correct, Thomas? Yeah, we were happy with the outcome. So everybody was happy and <laughs> now understand what the, uh, on what, what levels you can uh, experience resistances and uh, how to cope with this. So and uh, another goal is uh, to have a report at the end of there are some long working on gender dimensions of physics or no this is a midterm uh, a goal that all that we learn of course uh, from this conference and uh, all our working till some point put it in a report on gender dimension and uh, share it with the rest of the world of course so we have some process uh, plan that is uh, pulled up here 
Of course, first step is an inventory update of existing knowledge, second is uh, planning of activities and then uh, execute this plan, uh, try all these activities and uh, have an evaluation and then start all over again. So it's a circular process, not circular economy, that's something else. So this is pretty much standard, yeah, right. So I'm coming close to the end of my presentation, so we invite all of you who are interested in our work to join Genera. Uh, it, it's really an interesting uh, get-together and it could be very efficient, or it is already very efficient. And our plan is to establish this uh, type of conference, the Gedimir, uh, as a kind of format uh, and make it a regular event. So uh, we had it now done once, so when it comes a second time, it's close to a tradition. When it's happened a third time, then it is a tradition and we have to continue it uh, for forever. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know how to get in touch with us, with us then, then send an email to genera at daisy.de or talk to me. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, next up is um, Dalia Sadkovskiene, and it's an honor to me to introduce you um, to her. So, Professor Dr. Dalia Sadkovskiene is a physicist who graduated from the Department of Elementary Particles of the Moscow State University. As a PhD student, she took, took part in the first quark search experiments on the largest proton synchrotron at that time at the Institute for High Energy Physics in Protvino. I hope I said that correct. <laughs> My Russian is not very good. Um, later, working at the Faculty of Physics of Vilnius University, she, sh she changed the research domi domain to the quantum theory of molecules. Dahlia has more than 130 scientific publications and is the author of four textbooks in, the in theoretical physics. She was an expert evaluator of the Euro European Commission FP6, FP7 and Horizon 2020 programs in physics and worked as an independent observer for FP7 programs. She initiated and coordinated a number of international and national projects devoted to gender equality. Among them, there were two European Commission projects, Baltic States Network, Women in Sciences and High Technology, and structural change promoting gender equality in research organizations, in which she worked as an advisory board member. Um, she has initiated and is the president of the Basnet Forumers, and she represents Vilnius University in our Genera network. Last but not least, she is a core member in the Cost Action Voices. So. This is also her talk about so what she's going to present to you. It's the Voices Cost Action, Making Young Researchers' Voices Heard for Gender Equality. Welcome, Dan. Thank you very much, uh, Lisa, for so wide uh, explanation about my uh, life. And you know, uh, yeah. And uh, I also would like, uh, I'm very happy to be here and to uh, participate in Genera Assembly, firstly, and uh, later in this nice, super nice conference. It was very interesting. And um, I uh, would like to thank to one Thomas and to another Thomas for inviting me and, you know, for finding the place to present this project. Uh, you know, I uh, uh, was involved in uh, the pro uh, project uh, uh, preparing uh, uh, phase and, you know, uh, now I'm participating here and uh, I get a bit support from our people uh, in this project. We, we have the meeting uh, of uh, MC members uh, cost, uh, of this project here uh, last uh, uh, week in Vilnius. And you know, uh, they was very happy. Uh, it is the first dissemination event to give you <laughs> some news about the project. I would like to tell that the project started last year uh, in the October, at the end of the October, and you know, uh, all this time was used for, uh, <coughs> no, for uh, 
uh, setting, some structures, uh, and uh, it is participated uh, more than 40 by more than 40 institutions in all the Europe, and uh, you know. I think that uh, it is a good project because, as you can see from the title, it is Voices, uh, Cost Projects, Voices, it is acronym, uh, Making Young Researchers Voices Heard from Gender Equality. <coughs> this, uh, I, should, I should work. Uh, this, you know, Cost Project, uh, Voices is tackling uh, the problems of young researchers and um, uh, from gender equality perspective. What is the main problem? Due to globalization and marketization, European higher education and research systems experience deep changes, uh, uh, which, uh, which have dramatically transformed research careers. While doctoral and postdoctoral researchers constitute a fast-growing workforce, uh, their working conditions have become increasingly precarious and their career perspectives are uncertain. Those processes tend to extrabate and uh, create new forms of gender inequalities for young researchers. First and uh, foremost, women, because the woman is in this community discriminated, no more than others, and uh, there the situation is uh, uh, not very good for them. However, <coughs> uh, current institutional research and innovation policies, including gender equality policies, really uh, consider young researchers specific challenges. The main aim, the main aim <coughs> Uh, of action is to increase visibility of inequalities faced by young researchers from a gender perspective, as I said, and to promote a sustainable dialogue between uh, young researchers and stakeholders in the research ecosystem uh, at the systematic and at the institutional levels. What are the main objectives? The objectives are uh, divided to two uh, types, and one of type is the research coordination objectives, and uh, they are the following. Ensure effectiveness of gender equality plans in research institutions which integrate gender-sensitive measures and actions geared towards young researchers. Uh, develop guidance. <coughs> um, uh, on how to introduce analysis and gender equality plans to ensure inclusiveness of uh, gender equality plans for each topic tackled. Develop recommendations for appropriate monitoring and evaluation measures that uh, consider young researchers and <clears throat> promote overall and better understanding of gender inequalities and discrimination faced by young researchers <coughs> tackling a uh, taking into account national and disciplinary context. It is very important that there is also disciplinary context. Uh, in principle, the project uh, was um, <coughs> initiated by a group of sociologists from different countries. And you know, uh, there is only uh, few uh, uh, people from different, from from uh, STEM, you know. There is lawyers, as you said before, lawyers and, and economists and, and psychologists and biologists, but, but you know, from STEM, maybe only biologists and, and I'm as a physicist, yes. No, our group, yeah. <coughs> um, uh, the, uh, as I said, the, another uh, type of, of uh, uh, objectives is capacity building objectives. It is very important for this project to create a sustainable and supportive European community of gender equality plan practitioners that fosters knowledge sharing exchanges of good practices and reflections about gender inequalities at uh, uh, young researchers. Provide a platform for dialogue and co-construction of policies between young researchers and policy making bodies 
to ensure that the specific gendered experiences of young researchers are heard and co considered in national and European uh, policy uh, levels. Engage young researchers as advocates and change agents um, for a better research culture by encouraging transfer of gender, gender knowledge and cooperate and include non-governmental stakeholders outside academia in the action that have expertise and knowledge about discrimination at the workplace, equality and diversity management and career mobilities for scientists to enrich perspectives on the issues tackled. No, it is will understand it. Uh, the key challenges addressed by voices. It is important thing. Uh, how to enforce policies that in, it is uh, what uh, to those challenges. Uh, each challenge corresponds to a, a working group. And it is numbers of those groups, but uh, you will understand what, what it is about. Uh, how to <coughs> enforce policies that ensure better career perspectives and career development within the outside academia, ensuring that female young researchers have the pertinent skills, mentoring and networking opportunities needed for <coughs> intersectorial uh, mobility, as well as appropriate working conditions for female young researchers and and fear and attractive research environment. It is working group Y. One, the next group is how to better integrate young researchers and their interests into decision-making bodies. It is group two. Uh, uh, the next group is how to further share and disseminate knowledge on gender as research dimension in PhD and post-doc uh, training and uh, uh, research and innovation context. context. Uh, then, how it is, uh, we have uh, seven groups, but it is uh, number three. Uh, now, uh, how to tackle gender based violence at the early career stage within academia and uh, to disrupt current sexist discourses that sustain those violence in research and uh, innovation institutions. It's a group four. And uh, how to introduce an intersectional analysis to research policies in order to account for a more complex understanding of how inequalities play out at early stage uh, at early career stage researchers, number five. And now, <coughs> uh, uh, next one is, uh, which is important also, it is how to uh, how to access the, uh, access the uh, effectiveness and the impact of measures aimed at uh, young researchers and their career uh, progression. It is group, uh, uh, group six and um, uh, overall how to tackle the implementation gap of uh, uh, gender equality plans and um, uh, uh, make sure that they are inclusive of young researchers uh, specific challenges it is group uh, it is group <coughs> uh, it is all groups together would like to do this the approach <coughs> I, I think that approach is very important because it is uh, you know such collaborative uh, project and voices place peculiar attention to young researchers role in the action Young researchers have direct involvement in voices at every level. The Action Management Committee, they are also participating, the stakeholders board, as working group leaders and active action participants throughout all working groups. The action is implemented as a bottom-up process and the experience and perspectives of young researchers uh, <clears throat> participate, uh, participate in informed activities and uh, reflections as well as the content of the outputs uh, of the action. <clears throat> Young researchers will benefit from training schools 
uh, different training schools, for example, the integration of gender in research mentoring programs offered uh, by the action and uh, whereby they will be able to obtain knowledge on gender re relevant skills and resources for their career development. Uh, Voices seeks to act in the present in this investing in young researchers and women to ensure sustainable and transformative change in the research and innovation sector and to shape a better future for young researchers as workforce and as decision makers or innovators. <coughs> Action ensures participation of a wide range of stakeholders, such as universities, research centers, funding agencies, policy makers, um, non-governmental organizations, unions, um, representatives, companies, uh, um, associations, and so on and so on, in order to, to, um, <clears throat> in order to cross perspectives on the issues at stake. All stakeholders are engaged at uh, different levels and may have uh, different uh, agendas uh, with uh, respect to gender equality uh, and young researchers. Uh, well, <clears throat> and the last uh, thematic of the approach is um, uh, following uh, the core principles of the European Research Era. Voices takes on an integrated approach to the advancement of gender equality to young researchers in the research and uh, innovation sector. And the key challenges fit this multidimensional approach by focusing on the three European researchers <coughs> era priorities regarding gender policies in research, employment and career development with focus on a career mobility as uh, it represents a critical issue for young researchers. Then re leadership and decision making and gender as a research dimension. Uh, there is uh, written names of all groups uh, you can maybe see, yeah. And um, you know, <coughs> some of them are transversal and you know, uh, uh, on this, I would like to stop because, you know, uh, groups are only uh, now um, is working on the uh, plans and uh, uh, it is uh, you know, what, what is uh, in the project only, but not about what we did. But now there is some, uh, you know, uh, achievements. It is, we have uh, now the project um, internet site. Uh, I did not uh, uh, put here this, but you know, <coughs> uh, it is very easy. It is uh, uh, gender voices dot uh, it is very easy to find. And now we started uh, from, uh, we'll start from the new, uh, <coughs> from the new uh, summer school, which will be held in Krakow in Poland. And um, during uh, this, uh, the school is uh, uh, dedicated to the intersectionality. Uh, it, it is the first, our school. Uh, of this, our, it, it means of the project, and you know, uh, it will start, I think, in uh, the July, about um, somewhere 12 or 11 for one week, and uh, I think it will be successful. Uh, thus, I would like to go to the last. Uh, this uh, very nice, but this is very nice. I, I like very much, but you know they did not put uh, colors in the in the template uh, for the project. Uh, no, for the project yes, uh, uh, presentation. Uh, but this is very nice, and it is uh, on the on the uh, on the first uh, uh, page of uh, um, internet site, and I think that. It is very important to, uh, this project is very important because it is about our future, about new scientists. And um, Voices is inviting uh, Genera and uh, friends, <laughs> Genera and members and friends to collaborate, 
to collaborate by sharing of good practices, how mentioned process impacts situation and physics, as well as cooperation for creation policies and the measures for implementation better environment for young researchers from gender perspective. Uh, we also have um, in, in the mind that will be right recommendation, right paper, and recommendations to the European Commission and to others if we will, when we will have the uh, project results. Uh, thus, thank you for attention. <laughs> so well, thank yeah, you. Next up is um, Barbro Asman from Stockholm University on uh, NONDIP, the Nordic Network for Diversity and Physics. Yes, since I'm a physicist, I have to turn around. Okay, uh, uh, so my name is Barbara Osman, as you heard, and I'm a retired professor in particle physics. Uh, and since I'm retired, I'm not teaching anymore, and I'm not doing much research, but still I do a lot of different things. And one of the things is that I'm the chair of this uh, network, the Nordic Network for Diversity in Physics, known DIP. And uh, we are sponsored by NordForsk. NordForsk is an organization under the Nordic Council of Ministers that provides funding for and facilitates Nordic co uh, cooperation on research and research infrastructures. And uh, uh, this is, they, they don't have much money, so you, you can apply money for networking and stuff like that, but not for serious research. Uh, as far as I know, I, uh, yeah, I have to be a little bit careful, perhaps. But this is what I've heard. Anyway, so thanks to Genera, because uh, this uh, network uh, could start, because uh, there was a Gender in Physics Days in 2017 uh, at CERN, uh, organized by, uh, by Genera, CERN, ESO, and Nordforsk. And at this uh, conference, there was Lotta Stramberg uh, from Nordforsk. I don't know if you see anything there, a little bit at least. And she showed this plot. And what you see here is uh, the fraction of women uh, in STEM graduates uh, on the x-axis. And what you see on the y-axis is gender equality index. Uh, we, and the higher up you are, the better you are when it comes to equality. Of course, there are different kinds of these indexes, but roughly speaking. So, uh, I don't know if you can see the countries up in the ring there, but high up there with the equality index is Finland, Norway and Sweden, and the fraction of women in STEM is very low. And she called this the uh, Nordic paradox. And then she said in the coffee break, if you have any good ideas, we can support you with money. So, th that's not often you get that kind of offer. And uh, we didn't really come up with any ideas to solve this problem, uh, that, um, uh, uh, that this paradox. But we had some ideas, uh, which are a little bit smaller scale. So we said that, OK, we will organize gender physics conferences uh, and Nordic networking. So we will work together. And then we will also uh, organize a summer school or a web school on gender and physics. So I applied for money, or we applied for money, and we got uh, 490,000 Swedish crowns. Uh, if you take away zero, you get it in euros. For three conferences and a school. And we got this money then. Uh, and the applicants were from uh, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. And that was people I know, so friends for me that I sort of contacted, and we, we started to work on this. Uh, now we have a board, this is uh, the board of today, and uh, we now also, so it's Sweden, Finland, uh, Norway, Denmark, and also Iceland has joined lately. Uh, so we organize conferences, uh, so a typical uh, conference programs uh, is that this conference lasts for two days with the dinner in between, it's not so original perhaps. We invite keynote speakers uh, and one of them should be, uh, and we try to organize talk on a theme related to gender and diversity. Uh, 
uh, in general, and then we would like to have a physics talk. We think it's important with role, uh, role models. So uh, we have a physics talk with some uh, famous physicist, a woman. And then we have panel discussions about gender diversity on the theme. Uh, Presentation statistics or something else that is going on in each of the Nordic countries. So every representative, some representative from each Nordic country presents something. Uh, often statistics. Uh, and then we also have a physics talk from each Nor Nordic country by a woman. So we have role models also there. Then we also have presentations selected from abstract, and that can be that can be young physicists presenting what they are doing, or it could be something on gender, or or so it varies very much. So the first conference we had was in 2018, and we uh, the theme there was to look into Athena Swan that you heard about, and or June, uh, if we could have them in the Nordic country in some way or another. So I will tell you a little bit about Juni. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's very similar to Athena Swan. Uh, it's a project run by the Institute of Physics in UK, which is an organization similar to the Swedish uh, uh, Physical Society, for example, if you're Swedish, you know about that. But the difference is that they have money, which uh, the Physical Society doesn't have. Uh, and uh, they have an aim that uh, is similar to the one that you have uh, in, uh, in Athena Swan. The aim is to recognize, reward uh, physics departments who have taken action addressing gender equality. Uh, and they also have a grades. Um, it's a peer review process. Uh, and they also, it also includes site visits, which I like very much. So I thought that was a very good idea. Uh, uh, yeah, and I can skip that. So I visited UNO in London in 2019, and we were discussing if we could enlarge UNO to also include Nordic countries, but they were not so keen on that, which depend quite a lot on the fact that they wanted to do site visits and, and one shouldn't travel too much and all that. And then we couldn't travel because then uh, the corona came. So we haven't done more about that. Uh, uh, recently, actually, but now we have started to discuss at uh, Stockholm University, at our institute there, to join either UNO or perhaps Athena Swan. So we have discussed also with Athena Swan, and if there is an institute uh, that thinks that they would also be interesting to join on this, it would be great, because Athena Swan wants us to be more than one institute. So if you have any ideas or any uh, thoughts about joining, it would be great. So now the conference. Uh, okay, there you find the links to, to these uh, Athena Swan and Juno. Uh, the Stockholm conference, we had an invited talks from uh, Athena Swan project and the Juno project. Then we have a panel discussion among others uh, with uh, Sven Stavström and uh, who on earth is he? So if you are Swedish, you know, he was a director general of uh, the uh, Swedish funding agency, the, the most important one in heavy Sweden. So the thoughts there were that we should invite the uh, funding agencies in the Nordic countries and ask for support and, and how we could work on this together. Uh, Sven said that it was interesting. Finland, they couldn't come because this was they had too much to do at that point. Norway and Denmark, they were not inter interested at all. They said we, we couldn't care less, roughly speaking, which was a bit surprising to me, but anyway. Uh, uh, so, and then we also had the physics talk that I was talking about. So we have one on uh, astronomy and one on ESS. So then the Helsinki conference, uh, so uh, at that conference, uh, the science and diversity talk about, at CERN was supposed to be, talk, uh, be presented by Fabiola Gianotti, but she couldn't come for personal reasons. She was really eager to come. So we got instead Louise Cavallo, and you know her very well since yesterday, and she got an, gave an excellent talk. Uh, uh, not so much about science, so uh, more about diversity. And then the theme on that conference was on implicit bias. Uh, 
so we had the keynote speak uh, talk on uh, implicit, oh my God, it's <laughs> counting down, on implicit bias in ac academy, Professor Yadranka, I will not try to pronounce her family name, you said blah, blah, blah or something, Thomas, right? Yeah. Uh, she is from University of Heidelberg, uh, and uh, she was the main editor of this uh, booklet that you can't see there, but it's about implicit uh, bias in academy, done by Lero. Uh, and then we have a panel discussion about uh, unconscious bias. Uh, then 2020, no conference for obvious reason. Then we have a web conference in 2021 on racism and harassment. And there we had invited Angela Saini. I don't know if you heard about her. She has written two books. One is called Inferior, uh, about uh, women in science, and the other one is uh, The Return of Race and uh, Race in Science. Uh, and she gave an excellent talk about that. And uh, then we had a panel discussions about harassments, and we had a, a talk uh, on physics, uh, uh, and then we also organized this year's celebration of International Women's Day. And we have a famous speaker there, Meta. And then there was also a physics talk. Uh, and uh, uh, this I wanted to press a little bit about. Uh, we also collected short movies. They are about two minutes each. Uh, you find it on our webpage, where physicists uh, presented uh, their career research and why they started in physics and so on and so forth. Now we come to the upcoming, upcoming conferences. We have still money left. So the next conference will be in Iceland uh, in August. I will tell a little bit more about that. Then we have a conference in Norway and Denmark. That's the plan. So the Reykjavik conference is soon. It's the 18th and 19th of August. Uh, the theme here is uh, resilience, uh, and we will have a talk by Beata. Uh, yes, do I see her? No? Yes, great. Yeah, she, she will come there and give a talk. And you see the title there, since I'm in a rush. Uh, panel discussion about re resilience will also be there. And then we have a physics talk about black hole driven explosions uh, on the dynamic universe, uh, which is a, a professor from UK. Finally, last one, we also will have a course on physics and gender, or gender and physics, I don't remember which, which way we took it. That will be a web course, we decided to do that based in Lund with Thomas Brage, and I don't, don't know if you heard about him, but he sits over there uh, as a coordinator. And uh, to, to join this course, you have to have, be prepared, you have to have had studied mathematics and or physics. Uh, and then it will consist of two parts, uh, introduction to gender science and its application in physics, and project on gender pros uh, perspective on physics. Uh, and the plan is improved, right, Thomas? <laughs> I wasn't 100% sure. And the course will start in the spring 2023. Okay, thank you. It says uh, panel discussion, but what we're going to do, we have one more project that we, really great project we would like to present to you. And then we have one question that we're going to discuss after that, that Maria will bring up. But first, it's Eva. Mar <laughs> Sophia Miles from Southern Denmark University is going to talk about the Spears project, please. Well, thank you very much uh, and thank you for the privilege of speaking sort of uh, on the fly here. So I'm going to take up your time. Um, ten minutes is it running? I guess so. I'm going to introduce you to a project that I coordinate along with my colleague Liv beisner Peterson from University of Southern Denmark and it's called the SPEAR project, and it's a Horizon 2020 project. So I'll just go through this, and I'm, thank you very much for letting me speak here. And I'm also very proud to be part of the Genera network. So um, the SPEAR project is a Horizon 2020 project under the SWAFS program, so it is a sister project to a number of the projects that have been named here, the ACT project, the, the um, SAGE project, uh, a number of other projects that I've, are off my mind now. It's a three million um, euro 
project it is running for four years and four months. And it's been extended with these last four months because of the COVID crisis. It started the 1st of January uh, 2019, and this is an important date because our task was to implement gender equality plans. And at that time, this was not a requirement in the, the EU, and it became a requirement as we were designing and finally implementing our gender equality plans. So we're really happy about that momentum. We have 11 partners, and nine of them implement gender equality plans, nine universities and two other kinds of um, organizations. And actually, this map here is a little outdated because we've exchanged one project partner, Bulgarian project partner. It's a Southwestern University. It's no longer with us, and now it's in the International Business School of Sofia that is part of the project. We have two Bulgarian universities, two Lithuanian universities, including Vilnius that we just heard from. And we have a Portuguese University Nova of Lisbon and a University of Rijeka. And all of these uh, are first-time movers in, in gender equality initiatives and are now, because of SPEAR, heading um, a movement in their national context, which is really exciting, we think. Um, yeah. So, we have four objectives, and they all align with the former era objectives. We have uh, the removed barriers and improving career prospects for women in academia, and improving the gender balance in decision-making bodies, and strengthening the gender dimension in research content. And then finally, we have also pledged ourselves to increase the number of research-performing performing organizations with implementing GIPs. And we have a website we're really proud of and a lot of virtual materials, including actually a workshop on resistance, if anybody should be <laughs> interested. Um, and we also have developed a methodology called COMPASS, uh, which is about how to uh, ensure sustainable change and creative, open, mitigating um, change. The main task then is to implement gender equality plans. Each of our nine implementing institutions implements a gender equality plan, and we are far along. We have drafted the first ones. Germany and Sweden and Denmark, we are sort of the, the, the partners that are more advanced in EU language, but we find that we, we, uh, we end up um, inspiring each other very much, no matter the context. We don't have sort of uh, the experts and the novices. That, that doesn't really fly, <laughs> we think. Um, anyway, that is up to each institution. The main thing then for, 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 um, for the project is to create a supportive infrastructure so that the implementation takes place in a way that is context-sensitive and dependent on on the national and legislative and uh, organizational factors that play. So we have, uh, this is one example of a, a gender equality plan at the Plovdiv University in Bulgaria, which has, uh, has its own complete aesthetic language and is very um, artfully done in engaging a very wide range of stakeholders. And this is, this is in a context where the word gender is simply not on. You can't mention gender and get anywhere in Bulgaria. So this has been quite a challenge. And they've managed it so well that the EU, in their guidance on gender equality plans, have actually um, pulled uh, Plovdiv University ahead as a, as a good example. And on our website, you can see all the gender equality plans that we have. And since we're now then talking about a support structure that can support people in implementing gender equality plans, what we did was, when we designed the project, we, uh, when we um, applied for this, um, this grant, we thought we need to... Um, we need to go beyond, yes, this is a requirement, and we, of course we have to provide 
the, the, the scaffolding for being able to, to implement gender equality plans, but what we need is a cohesive way of understanding what the task really is about. And so we have, um, we've, I'm sure you know this concept, the wicked problem concept, but we came across this and thought this actually applies very well to what we're trying to do. So wicked problem has a, sense, a set of characteristics, it's complex, it's not just complicated, so it can't be solved in isolation. It really requires that people um, uh, work together. It sits outside a single hierarchy and across systems, and so any time you come up with a solution, you're bound to make problems further along the line somewhere. Uh, and, and this is very evident, for instance, if you manage to tackle the inclusivity problem in recruiting young researchers or PhD students, then there's a problem of, um, well, we can't get people to work directly because they, they haven't, they haven't uh, been part of the uh, milieu uh, already, so they don't know what we're talking about. Um, often, wicked problems have no stopping point, so there's no definition or clear definition of success and there are always symptoms of deep divisions. So it has to work across contradictory convictions and perspectives. There are no obvious right or wrong solutions, or be but only better or worse developments. So uncertainty and ambiguity is in inevitable, and even if we think here is the correct analysis of the problem, it's usually not conclusive. And even in all of this, there's an urge and a necessity to act, so you can't just wait to get to a point where you really know what this is about. So you still have to act, you have to do it on um, inconclusive and incomplete and contradictory information. It's a bit like this. You know, this kind of... Um, I've actually um, stolen this from Matthias Wulam nielsen who showed this, uh, how to tackle gender equality. So you stamp out and you finally get the one, uh, the sprouting water, but then it just comes up with more force in, in another um, situation. So in order to sort of deal with this, we thought, well, we need, we need both input, so, so hard evidence on, on how to do this, how to monitor, what, what to include in a gender equality plan, but we also need to be able to reflect together, because if we can't ever act on conclusive evidence, then how do we know, or how do we together find out what is better or worse developments? How can we learn from what we've been doing? How can we adjust our uh, solutions? So we have come up with this design. We have a community of learning, where we provide input and, and uh, tools and resources and so on. And then we also have a community of practice for the people who are then going out to try these methods or resources out. And they then come back to the community of practice and we have very structured ways of reflecting together um, in this on our experiences with um, implementing this. And this is what we call the community of practice. So our workshops cover issues such as how to um, make a process map for communicating uh, about gender equality issues. It's also about resistance. It's on resistance some more, because that was what was called for. And then also on the how to integrate the gender dimension in research, especially um, in terms of applications. We have... Um, the communities of practice, we meet once every time we meet for the project meetings, but we also meet online in between, and we have very specific ways or sort of format or structure for these meetings. Um, and we're very careful about it not becoming a coffee club. So it's, it's really a disciplined practice that is something that needs to be um, uh, practiced and, and uh, built up as a skill together. I think my time is out. So the output of this is uh, we have honest exchanges and deep inspiration. We also managed to do some creative collaboration, and this is really important. We, um, we build our common ground together, and I think what, um, what is a useful concept, at least for me in this, is that it's serious poetry. That is something that touches on 
uh, deeper levels than just rational sort of uh, being effective in the world. It's also where we are touched on a deep um, emotional level, affective level. And in, in the end, it also allows for a space where it's possible to really think big and be visionary. So we use things like this kind of thing also when we meet online. And I think I'll stop here.